Okay, so welcome back. Um, we will start now the second section of the of the um, second modeling webinar, modeling circuits with ODEs and experimental data. And in this section, we will see how with the models we constructed, in particular with the example that we constructed in the previous section of the Compute Sense Act device, how can we relate the models with the experimental data taken in the lab. Okay, so this is the circuit we had, remember, the Sense Compute Act with the Arabino, Setar, and RFP. So let's say we want to make an experiment and, and measure a constant that we made with this device and to compare with the, with the information and the simulations we got from the model. Okay, so first, what we have to do? We have to, we, we want to measure, but for, to make sense of what we will do, we want to have calibrated measurements. For example, in a parade reader, we would like to calibrate with the, with the reference for the fluorescence that we want, uh, fluorescing for GFP. And now we are starting in the measurement committee to have protocols and, and validations for, for Texas Red, which will be useful for RFP. And here is the link for the protocols in the, in the measurement hub. And um, in the next weeks, uh, Jake will be giving uh, very interesting webinars on calibration, uh, plate readers, and flow cytometry, and how to get uh, quantifiable fluorescence from those experiments. But basically what you do is you have a reference for uh, fluorophore, which in the case of the green is the fluorescein, and then you compare the fluorescence the, the fluorescence coming from the cells in your culture to, to that one. And from there you get um, an absolute measurement in molecules of equivalent fluorescein per particle. You also calibrate the, the OD to number of particles that can be a proxy for the number of cells that we have in the culture. Then we will be able to have an approximation of the measurement of how, mole how many molecules of equivalent fluorescein we have in a per cell. And why is this important? Because from the model, if you remember from the previous webinars of the last week, the information that we will get, the units of these guys is in molecules. And if we add here, I added the, the equation of the growth, for example, then uh, all these guys give you the information of the expression of the amount of molecules that we will have for uh, each cell that we are modeling here. And if we make the, the calibration carefully, we will get, as I was telling you before, and you will be able to see in the webinars in the next week, you will get in, the, in a unit which is molecules of equivalent fluorescein per particle or per cell. And these two are directly relatable because it's, they are telling you the same. The amount of molecules that I have per cell and an equivalent of the amount of molecules that I have in the cell. So, these two are directly comparable and we can uh, get information from them. If you don't do this calibration, then the number that you get from the measurement is something that you cannot relate to what you have in the model, okay? That's why it's so important to calibrate. Okay, so we have our circuit. What can we measure and what can we change from here? Um, as it is now the circuit, the only thing that we can measure or one of the things that we can measure easily with a plate reader or a flow cytometer, it's the fluorescence of the RFP, okay? And what can we change in our circuit? The only thing that we can change is the amount in the, in the experiment. Of course, we can change the way we construct the circuit, but once you have the circuit built and inside the cell, the only thing that you can change is the amount of arabinos that you put in the media and of course, if you remember, it's the one that we wanted to sense. This, one's, uh, this was uh, thought of a, as a sensor of Arabinus, okay? So we, we would like to be able to detect that. And so with these two, there, there is not enough information for uh, to get the parameters of all these um, equations of these two, because we have too many. So if we have only 
if you had only this circuit or this circuit, only half of this, then with one input and one output would have been maybe possible. But in this case, uh, there are too many things we want to, to estimate and to know, and we can change too few. So we need more. What can we do? If you remember when I was talking about the sense module, that uh, it depends on what you put. You can, you can make it a different one if you put the different uh, protein here in the output. When we, what we can do is to build another one which has a GFP instead of the theta. And then we will have something that we can measure also, which is the GFP as an output of the system. And then if we put all together, we will be able to, to use GFP. This is the same that we had before, and this is the, the extra one, which is the same PVAL promoter and the same RBS with a different protein here, which is the, the gene coding for the GFP. So we will be able to, if you look at these two, GFP and theta, they will presumably, they will be being expressed at the same level because they have the same construct upstream, the promoter and the RBS. So if we put all these together, we will be able to use GFP as, um, that's what I have written here, as a proxy for the tar. What, what changes in GFP will be the same that changes in, in the tar, okay? So we will be able to have information of this intermediate that is the theta here, because we want to characterize the, the promoter, the pitted promoter also. We want to characterize this one and this one. Okay, so let's say that we construct this and we make a, from now on I will use theta R here, but it, you can remember that it's getting the information from the GFP that we put, the, the second construct that we put down there. We have, uh, we make experiments changing the level of arabinos, in this case, uh, eight different concentrations from 10 to the minus two to, to 500, I think, a micromolar. And uh, we measure the, the GFP in a closed cytometer in this case. And we calibrate the measurement as I, as I said before, and as we will learn next week with Jake. And, if we do that, we get this for different, this plot, which is has arabinos on the x-axis and the theta, which is coming from the reading that we get from GFP, but it's in the same unit in electrical cell. And for the different induction levels of arabinos, we got the different uh, expression levels of the protein, theta GFP. So what we want to do with this? We have the model, so what we want to do is to compare the model for different values of arabinos, the one, the same that we put here. We want to compare what we get from here, which will be this guy, with the measurement, which is this guy. And for example, if you calculate the, the mean square error, which is this formula here, the error squared, and then you take the mean over all the samples, and then you get an estimation of the difference between what your model tells you and what your data tells you. If you make uh, an optimization, if you try to minimize this error, what you will get is uh, the values or the parameters of this uh, model that make um, the result to be similar. So the ones that make this similar to the measurement. The, the data are coming from the model and the data are coming from the measurement. And if we do that, this can be done in any with any software that deals with this. In MATLAB, there is the curve fitting app that is very easy to use. You can write your equation, you put the data, the arabinos concentration, the theta concentrations, and you get the fitting, the estimation of the parameters with confidence intervals and everything. So if we do that, we get this nice uh, solid line, which is the output of the model which is given by the following parameters. Look at in this case, we have, we got the, this one, we put it a three to be estimated, the hill coefficient, and we got a hill coefficient of one, but be aware that this can be, in general, is representing the cooperativity. So it, it has to be um, an integer 
one, it means that the molecules go along. If it's a two, they means they form dimers and then they act and so on. Uh, but if, if, as we are making a lot of simplifications here, and if you allow this number to be not only an integer, integer but also a, a fractionary number with, with, the, with decimals, maybe you will get numbers different than integers. Maybe instead of a one, you get a 0.9 or 1.1. Is that meaning that everything that you did is wrong? No. What it means? It means that there are some other things that you are not modeling maybe, but that they can be captured by making a slight change in that number. But it doesn't mean that it's wrong. It means that there is something, something else there that you are not taking into account, okay? So don't get crazy if you get a hill coefficient which is just not one. Actually, in this case, if you see the, the estimation is pretty good because of course it's inside the, the, the error bars and then it's pretty close to the mean, um, to the geometric means of the data taken from the full cytometer, but uh, there are some errors. If we allow this to be uh, not an integer, we will get a 0.9 actually, and the curve will be a little bit more better R squared to, to this, okay? But it's just a comment to, to tell you that it's not a problem if, if the hill coefficient is different, okay? We got the uh, basal expression of 0 0.02, which it means a 2%. It's a good promoter. If you have 2% of basal expression, not so bad. I have promoters in the lab that have 10, 15%. So good. And um, then we got uh, KD for the pivot promoter, which is 444, which is the concentration at where, somewhere here, at where this reaches the half. You know, so we are not seeing the rest of the curve here, but it goes up a little bit more and it plays the half concentration around here. And then the, the alpha of the pivot and theta, remember we are putting all these together. If you change the protein with the, and they have a different decay rate, then you will have to change. The, this will make a change here and presumably it will make a change also here. And this gives us the range that we have on the on the theta, the alpha, remember you see the, the maximum value here, which is seven to the seven times ten to the power of four, it's seven seventy thousand molecules. And one question that, that one could ask is is that a, a good number for molecules inside the cell? Yes, you can also go again to bio numbers and check what are the normal amounts of molecules inside the E. coli. And this is a, it's a on the higher end of the normal, but it's, it's not up to the 10 to the five, 10 to the six. There are some very crowded molecules that are having concentrations up to that. So if you look, we are getting a plausible numbers that are, can be used for, for the future. So if we do the same with the, and this, uh, this one is an interesting part. If we do the same, what are we doing here? Here we are putting, as we had in our model, the input of this, uh, of this device, it's, uh, it's the amount of theta molecules, this one here. How do we know how much we have from them? If you remember from the previous section, this axis came from the information from this axis. If you look here, we have four values of arabinos that give us the same uh, amount of theta, and those guys are the ones that are here. Okay, these are the four that have the same amount of theta, which is a little bit higher than 10 to the three. If we go back, we see that this was the value, 10 to the three. So these three, these four guys are the ones that are lined up here. And then, sorry, and then if you increase the amount of theta, we go back to the previous curve, increase the amount of theta going up there, because you increase the amount of arabinos, what you get here is that increasing values of theta give you decreasing values of expression of the RFP, which is what we wanted at the beginning is the inverter. So that's what this curve is telling us. And if we fit 
the curve again and we do what we did before but with our new uh, the, the, the expression of the promoter for this guy, for the repressor that we used before, we get these values for the parameters, okay? And if you look again, it's, it's different from before. The KD is higher, it's 2,000 molecules. Well, it's in molecules now because the input here is molecules of a fluorescent per cell, which is molecules in the end. And so it tells us that 2.5 kind of to the three, will be the KD, which is around here. And if you look, it's the half of the, the range between the higher and the lower. And the alpha divided by the DTR, which is the, the maximum that we will get up to here, which is 10 to the 3, 1039 molecules. And here the, the coefficient, I constrain it to be uh, an integral number at the beginning, but if you look, it has a very good fitting. So it means that what we thought about the theta, which is that it dimerizes, it makes sense. What happened in the previous one, if, if someone is uh, it's, uh, familiar with the Arabinos, it, in, the, in the literature it tells, it, it says that, that the Arabinos is also from the dimer, it binds to different places in the operators of the PVAP promoter. But in general, everybody says that it's a two. Here we got a one, but the fitting is good. So the data is telling us that this coefficient should be a one. Maybe we need to look into more detail of what we are doing, how we are doing the experiment, how the context of the circuit is, is uh, affecting to the, to the behavior of this. Or if we believe that it's okay, then we go on and we use. It doesn't mean that we cannot use this to do whatever we want to do. It, it means that people before said that this was another number, maybe check and, and take into account, okay? Okay, so with this, we reach, reach the end of the second section. If we have, if you have any question, you are free to ask them now. If not, we can go to the last part. <laughs>